Om Tam Ganapati Namaha. All right. So today we're going to start with a very fundamental, simple introductory video on just the signs and what planets rule what signs. So a lot of you guys are probably going to know this, but again, repetition is one of the best ways to really and truly learn a thing. So it's probably still good to have some of these fundamental ideas repeated. But um, as you see here, this is the North Indian, or sorry, this is the South Indian style chart. And uh, it's kind of faint. Let me give it a better outline. Um, and this is a square and each sign is always the same box. So this box is always Aries, even if you don't see a little line there, but just for the warm up for the introduction, this is Aries. The moment the sun moves in, like the spring equinox happens and the days are getting longer, Aries, tropical Aries begins. And um, from Aries it goes to Taurus, which is like May, you know, like spring, Taurus, you know, just a, a cow in a grassy field, you know, it kind of symbolizes all the plenty and the bounty and the bounty of the earth and the resources that are coming out in spring. Then you have Gemini. And you, that's June, then you get to Cancer, July, Leo, August, Virgo, September, Libra, around October, Scorpio, Sag, Cap, and Aquarius, Pisces, and then it goes back to Aries. And that is the wheel or the zodiac or the zoo of animals. What signs are ruled by what planets? So just starting off, um, basically like every sign has a lord, um, a planet, and this planet acts like a person. It acts like a landlord, or a, you know. So it's the this is where you get the idea of lord, lord of a sign from. And in the old days, lords were landowners. You know, like you weren't called a lord unless you owned land. Like think of like Game of Thrones and stuff like that. You know, in those days, that's where a lot of this these Western terms come from. Is that age, that time. So each planet or graha rules two signs except the sun and the moon they only roll one sign each and so there you know each planet is a lord of two signs except the sun and the moon the sun and the moon are almost thought of as like one planet together because it's like two aspects of the self the sun is the soul the moon is the ego mind and they're together always so the sun is the king the moon is the queen that's another way you can think of it they're always together and then all the other planets, the other five planets represent the five elements and all the skills and things and experiences that we can have uh, in the field of nature, in the field of creation. So sun and moon are kind of different from the rest. And the sun only rules Leo. It only rules a positive masculine sign. So that's why the sun is the most masculine force because it literally only rules a positive extroverted sign and has no feminine side whatsoever. So the sun is 100% masculine. It's up there just shining all the time. It doesn't take a day off, you know? It's always active. In the occult, masculine energy symbolizes action or active activity, you know? Um, and feminine symbolizes passiveness and receptivity. So in the contrast, the moon only rules a feminine sign. So that's why the moon is the planet of the goddess, because it's 100% feminine and 100% receptive. Um, so we've got sun and moon, the signs they rule. Outward from there, you have Mercury. Mercury signs, that is. You have Gemini and Virgo. Gemini and Virgo are both ruled by Mercury, the symbol this little, his symbol is like the moon at the top and then the circle and then across down. That's a very beautiful symbol that Western astrology came up with for Mercury because Vedic doesn't have that. But it's a perfect symbol because in Vedic astrology, Mercury is the child of the moon. The moon is the mind, the ego mind. And then the Mercury is the intellectual stuff that comes out of that, the curiosities and the skills and the things we think about and do and that's mercury and so that's why there's like this moon on top of mercury symbol and it come down from that and the cross symbolizes the energy crossing down or coming down into the earth plane and mercury is the earth element as we will see and he's also vishnu 
and Vishnu is the avatar, the one who comes down. The word avatar literally means to cross down, like that cross. Ava meaning down and tar meaning to cross. Like you can say aham tara or um, gaja tarati, the elephant crosses the street or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, so it's just crossing down. Mercury is the earth plane, bringing the divine down into earth. So that's what Virgo and Gemini are about. They're very helpful, useful signs. You know, they're about being, Virgo is a sign of being of service, being useful, you know, fixing things down here on the earth plane where they're actually tangible and you can feel the difference. And Gemini is a little bit more intellectual as the wind sign, but it's still the same idea. So, uh, you know, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. So that's what's also interesting is that Mercury's signs are close to the sun and Mercury is like the prince, as we'll explain in another video, he's like the next one to be king. But so you've got, yeah, you've got your uh, Virgo and Gemini, then you've got your Taurus and Libra, and these signs are both ruled by Venus. So you see Venus, you can see a correlation here, both, this is why this chart is so nice to study. Venus rules both of these, this whole, like, this pole, this axis right here. And... Uh, um, Venus, you know, Venus is the water element, um, and these are, and we, the water element is about, like, absorbing and um, nurturing and satisfying, and these signs have to do with that. Taurus is a sign of food. Libra is a sign of, like, social pleasure and trade and getting your desires fulfilled. Then we get Mars. Mars rules Scorpio and Aries. Um, these are his, this is his land, you know, um, to take it back to the real estate idea or like landlord idea so you know like mercury when he is in gemini or virgo it's like a king in his castle it's like a man in his own home in his land on his property he can do whatever he wants so it shows good karma whenever a planet is in its own sign essentially planet is in good dignity as we're going to find so yeah like venus that's when venus is in libra or taurus you automatically know there's good good affairs going on with venus at that time Mars, when Mars is in Aries or in Scorpio, you automatically know there's something good that Mars can do because it's like a landlord in his home. You know, he's going to fix his home up and treat it well. Um, and then, uh, you know, Pisces and Sag is ruled by Jupiter, the planet of spirituality and wisdom and philosophy. And these are the signs that are associated with seeking of the truth and philosophy so that all makes sense and jupiter is the sky or akash element um that which holds all the other elements um so when jupiter is in one of these signs you automatically know okay there's good karma here this plant's in good dignity because it's like a man in his own castle again and then saturn rules aquarius and capricorn the signs of winter time and so again, when Saturn is in those signs, it's showing good dignity, even poor old Saturn. He can still do a lot of good stuff when he's in those signs and in other places too. Um, and so this is just really neat. And, you know, you can even think of it like, uh, like the whole idea of the real estate is like the king, you know, this is summertime. Cancer is July, August. That's when for most of the hemisphere, most people on the planet, that's the best time of the year when the days are the longest. And the, you know, nature is kind of just freely giving its fruits, you know, and there's the rains, you know, are coming and there's just this fertility and there's just, that's just the best time of year to most people. If you ask most people um, on the planet in the Northern hemisphere, which is where most of the land mass of the planet is, you know, there's only 20% of the land mass is in the Southern hemisphere anyway. So um, basically uh, you look at, look at it like this like king and the queen get the best real estate the prince or princess is mercury gets the next best venus is parliament the minister um they get the next best mars is like the general or the knight he gets the next best real estate and then the priest uh you know the priest is mainly for the masses you know and so he's kind of right here with saturn getting not as good a real estate either but he doesn't mind because he's, he's spiritual and then Saturn is uh, Capricorn Aquarius getting the darkest days of the year. You know, like right now, the sun is in Capricorn. The sun is so south. It's insane. Like this, the opposite time of year in July, the sun will be like way over here above me at midday because it's, it's high noon right now as I'm making this. And the sun is like, you know, barely up there. Um, 
So the days are just so much shorter at Capricorn Aquarius. So it's like, you know, Saturn gets stuck with those because Saturn always gets the short end of the stick. You know, um, he's the furthest planet. He's like the servant amongst the planets. So that's why Saturn gets stuck with winter time, um, with ruling those signs. So these are the planets. These are the signs they rule and everything. Um, very, uh, very basic, simple, fundamental ideas, but you want to get these down. And you can also like, you know, you follow them um, numerically. So Aries is sign number one. So number one has to do with like fire, you know, and Mars. Number two has to do with um, getting like resources and, you know, uh, coming together with something. Now you need things because you were just born at the one. And that's the two. And that's why Taurus has to do with resources. Um, number three is, uh, well, once you have the resources, then you're almost like a bird that has to eventually leave the nest and grow apart and sprout forth, you know? And that's the number three in Gemini is about exploration and curiosity and things like that. And then the number four is, uh, you know, well, once you've done explored that, you've kind of gotten stronger. Now you're at like a secure comfort place, the four. Um, you're kind of happy. You can now enjoy something um, that you've developed at the three. And then the five, is uh, you're now kind of like starting on, um, it's an odd number again. It's now you have to kind of go into another initiation again, or you're learning and you're gonna um, find the little flaws in your theories and what your happiness, you're gonna find little issues with it and have to separate or purify. And that's the sun and Leo, and that's the five. Then you get to the six, that's Virgo. The sixth sign is Virgo. So, so that's what I'm trying to get is like, think of, when you think of Taurus, think of number two. When you think of Gemini, think of number three. It's the same thing. The symbols were actually just given there because it's hard for our mind to give our right brain to, to wrap around just a number. But think of Cancer, think of four. Think of Leo, think of five. Think of Virgo, think of six. Um, six is about uh, like fulfillment from the efforts that you had at the three and things. Um, and then you get to seven, Libra. Seven is like... Um, a completion or the fulfillment of a desire um and so that's that's kind of like what libra has to do with um we're about seven what is it? and then uh you get to eight so you can think of eight as scorpio um well eight is a very like mystical number it's an infinity symbol we'll go into this more when we go into numbers but uh eight is transformation and karmic balancing it's an even number again. We're getting into a new state of balance. And that's what Scorpio and the transformation and the death of Scorpio is all about. And then you get to the nine. The nine is the grandest number. Everything past that is just smaller numbers adding back up. So that's why Sag is the sign of the truth, the vision, the ultimate boon. Higher knowledge is at the nine. And then Capricorn is the 10 when the circle starts all over again. So that's why Capricorn is like uh, where Mars is exalted. It's like the the hero has now achieved a higher level. You know what I mean? And he's now, it's like, you know, if you were a knight here, you're like a true master knight. Or if you were a Jedi here, you're like Luke Skywalker in the third act of Return of the Jedi, you know? Or Neo in the third act of The Matrix or something. So 10 has to do with karmic mastery, you could say. When now you have to, after all this experience and this vision, it's sad, you have to now act, go back into the world. That's Capricorn. Then you, Aquarius is the, actually the enjoyment of the, these actions you just did. The air signs always have to do with pleasure or the aim of life of comma or pleasure, enjoyment, fun, socializing. So at Aquarius, the 11, well, it's like um, the last hurrah of your ego, the last thing that you're gonna enjoy before you just make peace with this world and then finally merge into the 12, which is Pisces and final heaven, fulfillment, enlightenment. And then the cycle starts over again. And yeah, so you'll also learn about the houses and you'll hear this debate where different people say that some people say that the houses don't act like the signs is all at all. They're just totally different things. And then other people are like, no, the houses act just like the signs. The seventh house is the house of love, just like the seventh sign Libra is the sign of love and on and on. And I, I side with that secondary group. That's what traditional Vedic astrology kind of implies this idea that the houses are, of course, different, and we use them for different techniques, but they come from the logic of the signs, like cancer being the sign of the mother and the home, the number four. So the fourth house has to do with the home, you know, 
the tenth house has to do with career because of what we just said about karmic action, so on and so forth. All right, hope that's a good little basic intro for you guys um, on the Rashi's and what signs each sign is, or what planets rule what signs. Thanks, y'all.